friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I've got a super fun card for you guys using the new Lawn Fawn Beam Me Up stamp set. And there's a lot of parts to this, so I'm going to jump right into it. The first thing I need to do is color my images, and I'm going to be doing that with Copic markers today. So I've stamped my images in Memento Tuxedo Black ink on some Copic Friendly cardstock. The first color combination that I'm going to be using is R22, R24, and R29. And I'm shading darkest to lightest as if my light source is coming right on from the front. So I'm adding my shadows all around the outside edges of my little aliens. And then I'm going to blend in towards the center with the R24 and finish with the R22. While I have my markers out, I'm going to be coloring additional images, and that is just to save time since this is a little bit of a longer card. Interactive cards are so much fun and definitely worth the extra effort if you have the time. The next color combo that I'm using is YR02, YR04, and YR07. So I'm starting with the YR07 and I'm going to color in the outside edge of this cute little alien with the uh, single eye cyclops alien, I guess you'd call him. So I just gave a little extra shadow around his eye to make that look like it's protruding out a little bit. And I also colored in the flames on my candles. And now I'm blending out my cyclops alien and my gift with the YR04. And then I will finish everything with the YR02. If you hadn't noticed, I am going to be doing a rainbow colored card. So that's why I'm just going in rainbow order. Up next, I'm using Y11, Y13, and Y17. And I'm going to color in some of the little details on the card. So I stamped the smiley face on the flag. There's a couple different options, but I thought that one would be fun. And then I'm also going to color the lights on the flying saucer and the bottom of my cake. I did use all three shades for the bottom of my cake, but just the darker two shades for the lights and the smiley face. And I did also decide to color in the ribbon on another one of the gifts, so I just started with the Y17, blended it up with the Y13, and finished with the Y11. Next, I'm using YG03, YG05, and YG07. And I'm going to color in this little guy right here and another one of the gifts. Again, starting darkest to lightest and shading towards the center as if the light source were full on. I guess it would be the sun or a star or whatever you want it to be since this will be out in outer space. So I just blended with the YG05 and finished with the YG03. The blue combo that I'm using is B02, B04, and B06. So I'm starting with that B06 and doing a little shading on my flag. I'm also going to color in the main body part of my little flying saucer. Still shading on all the edges with that B06. I'm also going to color in one of my gifts with the color combination and also the little candles. The B04 is going to be my mid-tone for the transition color, so I'm just going to scrub over the edge of that B06 and bring it towards the middle. I'm going to do the same thing on my little flag, and with my gift, I'm just going to shade upwards. And then I'm going to come in with that B02 for my highlight and just color carefully around that little smiley face so I don't get any on the yellow. And then I will fill in the rest of that main part of the little flying saucer as well. Also just being careful to go around those lights. And I'll use the same shade to finish off the gift. For the purples, I'm using V04, V06, and V09. And I'm going to color in my remaining little alien. I'm coloring him with that V09 on the outside edge for the darkest. And then I'm going to blend that with the V06. Again, just bringing that color towards the center of his body. And then for the highlighted area, I will take the V04. 
There is a pretty big difference between the VO4 and the VO6, so I'm just going to be really careful to scrub the edge of that color and really soften that up so it blends nicely. I'm also going to color in that last bow on the blue gift, and I'm going to do the rim on the flying saucer. And I left the bottom of the flying saucer plain for now because I thought I was going to leave it as glass. But later on I decided that it needed to be colored in, so I used the same orange combination as I did earlier. I'm bringing in the BG-11 to add a hint of color to the alien's eyes. And the last thing I needed to do was color in those two little antenna on the red alien, and I did that with BO2. And now that they're done, I can just trim them out with the matching dies. I'm going to continue my rainbow theme with the background. I'm using Abandoned Coral, Squeezed Lemonade, Twisted Citron, Peacock Feathers, and Seedless Preserves. And I'm just going to begin by dabbing the color on liberally in kind of a circular motion. I'm creating a galaxy background, so it really doesn't matter uh, how the color goes on. You just want to have some nice bright spots that are going to show through. So I'm gonna go one by one through each of these colors and then I've got a piece of paper off to the side that I will also add a little bit to. I'm gonna need a mechanism for my pull tab slider. So I'm gonna do that one as well and kind of try to match it up to similar colors for where the slider mechanism is gonna go. So I'm just gonna to continue to do this. I'm using Tim Holtz watercolor paper I find I get the best results with this paper for this particular technique. I often do use Bristol Smooth cardstock for Distress Inks, but I wouldn't get quite the vibrancy on that kind of paper as I would on this one, which is what I really need for it to show through once we layer all the other dark colors on top. This paper has both a smooth side and a more traditional watercolor textured side. I am using the side with the tooth just because I like that look. The last color I'm adding in is that Seedless Preserves, so I'll just finish up adding a couple spots here and there and also on that extra panel. And now is when this is going to turn into a galaxy background. I'm going to take Chip Sapphire and black soot and begin blending those in from the outside edge. So I'm using the chip sapphire first. I'm just gonna go all around the uh, top three sides. The bottom edge is going to be covered up with a different panel so I can skip that. So I'll just blend that in from the sides and then begin to work my way through the center, covering up some of the brighter portions of that background. And then I'll come in with that black soot and really darken up the edges, which is going to intensify the colors that are left in the center. For my planet, I'm going to use Abandoned Coral and Carved Pumpkin, and I just die cut that with the Lawn Fawn Simple Stitch Hillside Borders. I'll take the Carved Pumpkin and bring that in all along the bottom edge. And then I'll flip that around and bring in the abandoned coral from the top. I wanted it to look kind of like a red planet, so it could be Mars or it could be any planet, but I wanted it to have kind of a vibrant red-orange glow to it. Once all those elements are done, I'm going to bring in my Distress Sprayer and give those a good spritz. Let the water sit there for a few seconds, and then I'll blot that off with a paper towel. I'll repeat that step one or two more times until I'm happy with the results. And then just on the galaxy background, I'm going to bring in some Copic Opaque White. I'm going to add it to an acrylic block, and then I'll spritz a little bit of water in that to mix it up. I'll take an old paintbrush to blend that together, and then I'll just begin to flick that off the edge onto the panels. I'm also going to bring in some shimmer spritz in the color Sparkle, which is just a clear sparkle, and then I will set these panels aside to dry. For my sentiment, I'm going to add my planet to my Misty and then stamp that in VersaFine Onyx Black ink. I am put together a sentiment that reads, have an out-of-this-world birthday, beam up some fun. 
and I will stamp that down twice to make sure I get a really good impression, especially because of the texture of this watercolor paper. I really love the fun and playful sentiments that they included in this set. They're just perfect for kids cards. While I have my Misty out, I'm going to stamp the inside of my card. I'm using Lawn Fawn's Jalapeno ink to stamp out my favorite sentiment in the whole set and the flying saucer. Then I'm going to take a piece of post-it tape and mask off the edge of the flying saucer so that I can stamp the little alien to go inside and not have his legs go over the edge. And I can peel that off and he's just perfectly in there. Super cute. One of the coolest products that Lawn Fawn came out with at their previous release was the Glow in the Dark Embossing Powder. And I just had to try it out on this card. I've been dying to see how it works. And the space theme was the perfect opportunity. So now I'm just taking two different stars from the Lucky Stars stamp set. This is an older Lawn Fawn stamp set, but there are many different Lawn Fawn sets that include stars. So if you don't have this one, don't worry. Just look through your stash. You probably have one. I'm stamping these out in Versamark ink, which is just a clear sticky ink that works great for embossing. I'll grab a plain piece of typing paper to protect my work surface and catch all that embossing powder. And I'll just sprinkle that liberally all over the card base. Then I'll flip that over and tap off the excess. And then I can use that paper to funnel that powder right back into the container nice and easy. Then I'll heat set that with my heat tool until they're nice and melted. They kind of look almost clear with just a little hint of a yellow haze to them, but they really do work. Stay tuned to the end of the video for a photo of them glowing in the dark. I've added some score tape to the back of my planet, and I'm going to adhere that down to the bottom of the card, just lining that up nice and straight, and then pressing that into place. So for the idea that I had for this card, I needed two clear elements. So I stamped the flying saucer and the light rays on some acetate with some stays on ink. And now I'm taking a pair of scissors and I'm going to cut off the top of the flying saucer. And then I'm also going to just trim off those two edges there just to help it line up nice and easy. I'm going to take some more strong tape and adhere that down to the back of the flying saucer. And I'm using this kind of tape rather than liquid glue just because this doesn't have any drying time. So I'll just peel off the backer sheets and then line that up and press that down into place. To adhere the light ray, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add a little bit more of that score tape, just curving it along the edge. Then I can peel off that release paper and just line that up on the back and press that into place. I'll add one more little piece of that score tape over to the left side and I'm rolling that up on itself so it doesn't hang down too far and I'll use that to attach my little green alien. I'm going to line him up on my card base so that I can see where I want my slider mechanism to go. I'm using one of the slide on over dies from Lawn Fawn. I'm going to tape that into place and run that through my cuddle bug. And this one was a little too short, but the next one was a little too long. So I just ran this through a second time and adjusted that so it made the channel a little bit longer. I'm doubling up some small foam dots and adding those to each side of the flying saucer. Then I'll add that to my card, making sure that there is room for that slider channel on the right side of the little green alien. I lined up my pull tab on the back and now I'm going to take an extra foam dot and add it to the back of the little red alien. And then I can just lift up the acetate and press him into place right where we want him. And then he's going to be able to get beamed up right from the planet into the flying saucer. Yay, so fun! I've added some foam tape to the back of my card, making sure to create a channel for that pull tab slider to pull through. And I've also created a stopper down at the bottom so that the tab can't fall out the bottom of the card when the recipient picks it up. 
I'm just going to peel off the release papers from the backs of those and then I will line that up on the front of my card and press that down into place. This card did take a while for me to figure out so my camera battery kept dying so while it was charging I went ahead and embossed the little pull sentiment and the arrow to show the recipient what to do. I also want to add in this little uh, piece from the slider mechanism just to cover up the card base since the pull tab has to go up so far that it actually reveals the card front and I didn't want that to show. So this blends in much more nicely. And there's the stamp set that I used. It's the push here from Lawn Fawn. And I just masked off the pull because that's all I had room for on that top piece of the pull tab. I've added some more score tape to the back of all my images and peeled off the release paper so that I can just grab them and add them to my card nice and easy. I'm adding this little purple alien over on the left and then I'll do the orange guy over on the right and I'll give the purple guy the flag to hold and then I'll just sprinkle the gifts and the cake all throughout the rest of the top of the planet there. As a final embellishment I'm going to take some pretty pink posh iridescent stars and some ranger multimedia matte I'm going to dab the glue right onto the card base. I feel like that's the easiest way. And then I will grab my pick-me-up tool and begin to just set those into the liquid glue. Since they're so tiny, this makes it nice and easy. They're pretty hard to pick up with your fingers. And that is going to complete our card for today. I'm going to lift that up to the light so you can see all that sparkle. And then I will give you guys another look at the inside as well. I added a sentiment from the Lights Out stamp set just to let the recipient know that it does indeed glow in the dark. And now I'll give you one last look at that pull tab slider in action. I think it's so fun. I'm so glad this worked out like I had envisioned it. <laughs> that doesn't always happen, but I'm really glad it worked out this time. The glow in the dark feature didn't pick up on video for me, but I did manage to get a snapshot of it. So that will be here in just a second. You can see how that turned out. There you go. It looks even better in the pitch black, but it just didn't pick up on camera for me. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Here's two extra videos you may also enjoy. Hopefully those will tide you over until the next one. Until then, have a great day. Bye-bye.